All right. Let's do one more day. I'm in a fire. Collapsing buildings and burning people. No matter how far I run, the scenery is always red. This is a vision of ten years ago. A memory of the distant past I haven't remembered in a while. I run through it, as if recreating the scene. There's no escape, even though I know it's a dream. Run. Run. Keep running. In the end, where I end up is how I'm sa is how I'm saved after running out of energy. I wake up with a bad feeling. Feeling like a metal weight is inside my chest. I feel my forehead and find that I'm sweating a lot even though it's winter. It's already this late? It's already past six o'clock. In the kitchen, I can hear the sound of the kitchen knife cutting something. Hmm. Soccer as early as usual. There's no time to be impressed. I have to get ready quickly and go help fix breakfast. My man overslept to six. He went to sleep at one. He does this every day. I want you to understand that. He wakes up at like five, five thirty. He works out. He preps breakfast. He cooks for three people. He goes to school. He attends school. He helps out with whoever he can after school. He goes to his job. He goes home. He cooks dinner. He practices strengthening technique, and then he goes to bed at like 1 or 2 in the morning. He's gonna die at age 30. He's an idiot. I love him. Cheryl, what are you gonna do today? Will you be working this afternoon because it's Saturday? No, I don't have work today. I think I'll be doing something with Issei. Why? Oh, nothing. I just hoped you might come and visit me at the dojo today. I'm in a pinch this month. Hmm? In a pinch? Dai Pinchy? What is? My wallet. I'd be really happy if someone made me lunch. I refuse. It's your own fault, so you should skip a meal once in a while. <laughs> I'm not expecting anything from Shiro. The only one I'm depending on is Sakura-chan. Right, Sakura-chan? Yes. If you don't mind having the same lunch as me, I can prepare one. Yep, fine, fine. Let's eat lunch to together today, then. Breakfast continues as usual. Today, along with the usual, there's sim simmered lotus root with chicken. I don't think she has to make anything this elaborate for breakfast, but I think she made a lot of I think she made a lot of it to take for lunch, too. Sakura is a member of the archery club, and Fujine is in charge of the archery club. It's natural for them to share lunches. Oh yeah, Shiro, you were late this morning. Did something happen? Fujine looks at me, sipping her miso soup. Jeez. She's usually s slow, but she gets sharp only at times like this. I had a dream about my past. I just woke up grouchy, that's all. I see. Nothing unusual. I'm relieved. Eugene ends the conversation like she's not interested. I'm not worried at all about it either, so I shouldn't get mad about it. Ten years ago. I used to have nightmares back when I couldn't get the fire out of my mind. But I saw less of it as time passed, and I'm well over it now that I can let it slide even after dreaming about it. But I guess it was pretty bad back then. Since Eugene has been here since that time, she's pretty sens she's sensitive to my change. Shiro? Are you not hungry? You don't happen to have no appetite this morning, right? I am hungry. I'm fine, so don't try to take my food using my dream as an excuse. Man, I'm glad you've gotten so strong, but personally I wish you were more delicate. That's my line. I wish you'd be more sweet. We make fun of each other without looking at each other. That proves my liveliness, and Fujine laughs with relief. <laughs> to be honest, I'm glad she's worrying. She'll be elated if I thank her, so I act like I'm discontented. Oh. Not knowing the circumstances, Sakura looks puzzled at the way we're acting. After Fujine leaves, we lock the house and leave. Senpai, I won't be able to come and help out from tonight until Monday. Is that alright? Hmm? That's alright. It's the weekend anyways. You should be hanging out with your friends, so don't worry about it. Huh? No, that's not it. It's not like that. It's just a personal errand, and I'll be attending the club too. 
So you can come to the dojo if anything comes up. I I'm not going off to play because it's the weekend, so please don't misunderstand me. Huh? Sakura's acting suspicious. She looks very tense. I don't know why, but I guess she just means she can't come over this weekend. Okay, I'll go to the dojo if something comes up. Yes, it'll make me happy if you do so. Sakura looks relieved. When she looks down, her face suddenly stiffens. Senpai? Hand? Sakura's staring at my left hand. Looking down at it. It's bleeding. Huh? Pull up my sleeve. There's certainly blood there. What's this? Maybe I cut it while fixing something last night. It doesn't hurt at all. It's just a welt on there. The welt goes straight from my shoulder down to the hand. It looks kind of like a small snake running from my shoulder to my hand. Well, I don't feel any pain, so it should go away quickly. Don't worry, it's nothing. Yes. Say so. Perhaps she's feeling bad from seeing the blood as Sakura looks away and falls silent. I leave Sakura, who has club activities, and head to the school building. The schoolyard is full of spirited students running around. Still, there's something awfully wrong here. School's like it always is. The students at morning practice are lively, and the new school building is spotless. Maybe it's just my imagination. When I close my eyes, the air completely changes. The school, the, uh, the, the school building is covered with stains like membranes. Students running around the schoolyard seem like empty dolls. Maybe I'm just tired. I shake my head to clear it. I head to the lifeless building. He's noticing the barrier thing? Yeah, but he's so shitty at magic that he doesn't know what it is. <laughs> School ends early on Saturdays. Classes end before noon, and after I finish helping Issei, the sun is starting to set. Well, let's head home. I pack up and leave my classroom. And then... Oh, you're still here, Emiya? I bump into Shinji. There are a couple of girls behind him, being rowdy. You were still here even though you had nothing to do. Oh yeah, we're sticking up for the school student council again, right? I envy you. You can get good reports from the school without doing any club activities. I'm not helping the student council. It's only natural for a student to fix the school equipment, right? After all, we're the ones using them. <laughs> keep talking like that. For you, everything's natural. Didn't I tell you how I hate how you act like a good kid? Hmm? Sorry, I don't remember that. I thought that was just the sort of thing you say, so I didn't really notice it. <coughs> Fine. Then you're gonna fix everything at the school? Fixing everything would be impossible. The most I can do is take care of things. Huh? Alright, then do me a favor. Our archery club is in kind of a mess right now. It's a bit disordered, and some of the bows need strings attached. If you've time, can you do that too? You used to be a member. Don't just stick to the student council. Be useful to us sometimes as well. What? Senpai. Oh. What? Senpai, didn't Fujimura-sensei tell you to do that? That's right. You'll be scolded tomorrow if you don't do it properly. But the shop will close if I start cleaning now. It's fine if he does it, right? I don't know. Besides, an outsider wouldn't know how. Are you sure? Shinji said he used to be in the archery club, so we can let him do it. They're getting rowdy behind Shinji. It seems they're in the archery club. They must be members that Shinji recruited recently, as I don't know them. I'll leave it to you, then. He's in the usual place, so go ahead. You don't mind, right, Emiya? No. I have some free time, so this, is, so this isn't a bad thing to do once in a while. <laughs> Thanks! Let's go, everyone. He says he'll do the boring chores for us. Oh, wait. Senpai? Uh, oh, yes. Please take care of the cleaning, Senpai. Cleaning ends quite easily, as I know the place well. It took a while, as it is quite big. But it was fun cleaning the place I used until a year and a half ago. I picked up a bow, thinking it might be okay to shoot just once. But since it wasn't mine, I decided not to. If I ever want to, I can just bring my own bow and come here. There's so many more carbon bows now. 
It's only one when I was in my first year. Carbon-based bows are good, unlike wood and plastic bows. The biggest problem is the price, and they're not something we could buy with the club budget. Back then, Shinji was the only one using it. The new member's rich, too? What a waste. You can modify a wooden bow a lot more. Well, I guess that's personal taste right there. When I look at the clock, it's way past curfew. It's a little after 7 o'clock. The gates should be closed by now, so there's no reason to rush now. But still, is this dojo always this dirty? There are loads of places that look unkempt. Unkept. Well, an hour or two won't matter now that I've done this much. Another hour or two. I've started this, so I'll finish the job. Wind is blowing. It's so cold that my cheeks are getting numb. Yuki City isn't usually cold during the winter. It's cold tonight of all nights. My breath hangs around as a white cloud. I wrap up my body to hold off the cold. No wonder it's dark. The moon's behind the clouds. There's no light in the sky when I look up. Because of the strong winds, the clouds are moving fast. It's past curfew and there's no sign of life in the empty school. It seems this place is filled only with chill, as it's all silent. Huh? It's just now. I hear something. I do hear something. Is it coming from the school grounds? It's night. I must have been curious about the sound that broke the silence. I investigated. I found myself heading there, even though I somehow know that I mustn't. I go to the schoolyard. Oh. Well, they only look like that from a distance. It's a dark night with no light. If I want to know more, I'll have to go closer to the schoolyard. You know the sound's louder now. It's the sound of metal hitting metal. It must mean someone's fighting with weapons there. That's stupid. What the hell am I thinking? I dismiss the image from my mind with a bitter smile and walk on. At that time, maybe my instincts don't just the danger, as I hid myself as I approached. I don't know if this is fortunate or not. But anyways, when I get by a tree that's big enough to hide myself, I take a closer look at the source of the sound. My mind stops completely. What the? There's something strange there. A man in red and a man in blue. They're dangerously armed, and as their ominous appearance suggests, they're actually slashing at each other. I can't understand. I can't follow them with my eyes. My brain doesn't work properly, faced with their impossible movements. The clang of their weapons tells me they're trying to kill each other. I just knew immediately when I saw them. They're not human. They're probably just things that look like humans. I can tell not because I'm learning magic. Anyone would realize they're not human. After all, humans can't move like that. So there's something no one should associate with. I can feel their murderous intent even from a distance. I'm gonna die. My body understands faster than my brain that I will definitely die if I stay here. That's why my heart is racing so fast. As a living thing like them, I sense that they're living things made only to kill. They're using weapons made only to kill. I remember the murder yesterday. I said the family was killed with some weapon like a sword. <laughs> I shouldn't watch any longer. But my body won't follow my commands and I can't even breathe. My mind wants to run away, but my judgment tells me I'll be seen the moment I run away. More than the conflict within me, my body's just numb. You know, I'm over 40 meters away. I can't breathe properly. And it's like I have a spear pointed right at my back. Sound stop. Figures separate, stand facing each other. The moment I feel relief at the end of their battle, I sense an even stronger intention to kill. <gasps> my heart stops. The numbness of my body becomes convulsions, and I clench my teeth to try and hold my trembling body. The hell is he? An overwhelming amount of magical energy is flowing into the guy in blue. Ritsugu showed me once what it's like to draw in magical energy from the surroundings. It's a beautiful magic that impressed even an amateur like me. But that thing's different. Just as even the simple task of drinking water could seem ugly if it goes too far, what he's doing is so excessive that anyone with knowledge of magical energy would hate it. It's gonna die. The guy in red is going to die. It's a blow with that much concentrated magical energy. There's no way he'll be able to survive it. He'll die. He's not human, so something merely like a human will die. That's... 
That's... That's something I can just ignore. The doubt takes my mind off them. Lines on my body disappear, and the instant I take a deep breath... Who's there? Sky in blue stares at me. Who's hiding? <laughs> the blue guy's body sinks. Just that motion tells me that I'm his target now. <clears throat> my legs start running automatically. I finally realize that it's an action to escape death. Oh, wait. Oops. <laughs> I didn't finish my line. And I put all the energy in my body into running away. I don't know how fast I run, but before I know it, I'm in the school building. Stupid of me. I regret my actions, panting heavily. I should have run into town to get away. What am I doing? Fleeing to such a deserted place. At a school of all things. Isn't there some better place to hide than here? Anyways, why do I think I'll be killed if I don't escape? <sighs> My heart aches from running so much. Turning around, I can sense nothing pursuing me. The only sound in the air is the sound of my footsteps. <sighs> so I can finally rest. I stop my feet, unable to take another step, and send oxygen to my pumping heart. I look up to finally realize that I'm safe. And... What was that? I recall the scene from earlier while catching my breath. Okay. I'm sure that it wasn't something I should have seen. Some things like humans were fighting in the school grounds. That's all I can remember. There's something else I saw out of the corner of my eye. Isn't there someone else, too? I can't remember what that figure looked like. To be honest, I didn't have the composure to notice anything other than those two fighting. Well. Anyways. Chase is over, right? But the chase is over, right? The voice comes from right in front of me. Yo, you ran pretty far. I can't breathe. My brain stops. Even though I can't think, I vaguely understand that I'm going to die. You know better than anyone you know better than anyone that you can't escape, right? People who get killed are usually like that. It's nothing to be embarrassed about. You don't have to feel ashamed. The lance is casually raised. You were just unlucky. Well, you saw us, so die. The man's lance mercilessly pierces Emi Ashiro's heart. There wasn't even time to dodge it. All the training I did was for nothing. I knew I was going to be killed. I knew I was going to be pierced by that lance, yet I could not move at all. The world distorts. The body grows cold. Feeling vanishes from my fingertips. I cough up blood just once. More blood should have come up, but it only happens once. Perhaps the man's lance is special. The blood slowly clots, and the heart that should have exploded stops working as just a single pierce. I can't see well. There's no feeling in me. I feel like a jellyfish floating in the dark sea at night. I don't feel any pain already. The world is white, and only I am black. So rather than feeling like I'm dead, it's more like the world around me has disappeared. I know this. I felt this ten years ago. This is how someone feels when dying. Dead men tell no tales. It's only natural for the weak to die, but I cannot concentrate on my vision. And you really make me do unpleasant jobs. It's a joke that a hero's acting like this. You only hear voices. I know. I have no complaints. I saw the girl's servant, so I'll go back. A voice filled with irritation. And after that, I hear footsteps running through the hallway. Archer, huh? I want to finish the match with him, but I have to follow my master's plan. Jeez, I don't like him. The voice suddenly disappears. I guess he jumped out of a window or something. And after that, footsteps approach me and stop. In that brief period, more footsteps. And here much now. Follow him, Archer. Lancer will probably go back to his master. This won't be worth it unless we at least find out what his master looks like. Whose voice was that? I concentrate my fading mind, but I can't remember anything. Right now, everything's too noisy. Lungs must still be alive. They're coming out of my mouth is as loud as a hurricane. It's amazing he isn't dead yet. 
I sense someone looking at my face. Perhaps my breathing was loud as the figure tries to close my mouth and... Stop it. Why does it have to be you? I hear the person grit their teeth, and they touch me without hesitation. Or the damaged, or damaged organ use it as a substitute. Store the heart in the process, huh? If I succeed, I'll be accepted to the clock tower instantly. Pain-filled voice. With that, my mind stops fading. Feeling returns to my body. Slowly, bit by bit, a drop of water going down a leaf. Feeling returns to my body. What's the person doing? The person is sweating and places their hand on my chest with all their heart. When I notice, the place where the person placed their hand is terribly hot. It must be so hot that the frozen blood melted and started to flow again. I sense someone take a deep breath and sit down. I'm tired. I hear a clang of something falling. Well, I guess it can't be helped. Forgive me, Father. My daughter's terribly heartless. And that's it. The person speaks to mock themselves and leaves. Heart resumes its activity. And then, my mind stops. This is not the sleep of death. This is a restful sleep to recover the energy to wake up again. Wake up. I feel sick. My whole body's in pain. I have a sharp headache each time my head throbs, or my heart throbs. What happened? I can't remember because of the sharp headache. My body's cold, probably from lying on the floor for a long time. The only certain thing is my ripped uniform and my own blood on the floor. <laughs> I could get up with a hazy head. The spot where I was lying looks like a murder scene. Damn. I really had my chest pierced. <sighs> Bearing the pain, I enter the closest classroom. Moving to the locker with unsteady steps, I take out a mop and a bucket! <laughs> He's such a good boy! doing. I'm still confused. Why do we think I have to clean up when I've just met something totally outrageous and been killed instantly? Am I an idiot? <sighs> Damn it. It won't come off. I wipe the floor with a mop. With unsteady hands, I manage to get the blood wiped off and pick up any trash lying around and put it into my pocket. <laughs> Maybe I'm destroying the evidence. I'm still in a daze, so perhaps that's why I'm doing something so absurd. put back the mop and bucket, and leave the school like a zombie. I get hotter as I walk. The air is so cold, but it feels like my body's burning. When I get home, the day has already changed. There's no one home. Neither Fujine nor Sakura is around now. I collapse to the floor. I lie on the ground and finally calm down. Take a deep breath. When I inhale, my heart cries in pain as if cracking apart. No, that's wrong. It wasn't just cracked. It had a hole in it, but it healed, and the wound tries to open up again when I inhale. So it's true that I was almost killed. No, that's wrong too. I wasn't almost killed. I was actually killed. And I'm still alive in spite of that, because someone saved me. I wonder who it was. I should at least thank them. Since the person was there, that person might have something to do with them. 
That makes no difference to the fact that the person saved me. I have to thank them one of these days. <coughs> the moment I let my guard down, the pain returns. At the same time, I feel like vomiting. <coughs> I sit up and resist the sickness. <sighs> Place my hand on my bare chest where the uniform's ripped. Even though I was saved, I did have a hole in my chest. Feeling. Such an unpleasant feeling. A spearhead entering my body isn't something I can forget easily. <sighs> I'll have nightmares about this for a while. If I close my eyes, it feels like the lance is still in me. Shake off that illusion and try to calm down. Right. Starting to calm down. The result of all that training every night. Just taking a few deep breaths clears my mind and the heat and nausea vanish from my body. So, what about those guys? A man in blue and a man in red. They looked human, but I don't think they were. Are they like ghosts or something? But I've never heard of ghosts with form, able to associate directly with people. And they were talking, too. They have their own will. It's hard for me to think of them as ghosts. I've heard that the only ghosts with a body are spirits, but aren't they shaped differently from humans? No, that's not the problem. There's another fundamental problem. Those two who were killing each other. The murderous burglar that has appeared in the neighborhood. The ongoing ominous events in Fuyuki City. All I can tell with such thoughts is that it's way out of my league. My father was still alive. Perhaps because the wound on my chest is so vivid, I complain about things I shouldn't. I've already decided to do whatever I can, even when I don't understand. Planning comes later. First, I have to decide whether or not it's my concern. <laughs> the bell hung from the ceiling rings. This is Omegas' house. Even if only a poor one. There's a boundary field that alerts me when a stranger enters the property. Claire, a time like this? As I speak, I realize my foolishness. Can't be it. With this timing, right after that strange incident, that can't be it. It's an intruder. Not a burglar, but an assassin who's here for my life. As I remember that guy saying, You saw us, so die. The house is filled with silence. In the silent darkness, the murderous intent that I felt at school is slowly drawing closer. <gasps> my throat gulps. I feel a sharp chill running down my spine. I'll be instantly pierced if I move from this room. <laughs> Frantically contained the scream about to escape my mouth. The instant I release it, the assassin will happily jump in and take the opportunity to kill me. If that happens, it'll be just like before. Unprepared, I will be pierced by that lance again. <sighs> the moment I think about it, my breathing goes wild. I'm ashamed that I'm about to give up my saved life so easily and that I'm afraid. <clears throat> like gritting my teeth and holding my chest, I try to restrain myself. I should get used to it. It's the second time. It's the second time I'm about to be killed. That alone is enough to make me want, want it to end differently from last time. Besides, I'm a magus. What have I been learning for the past few- the past eight years if I can't even protect my own life? Right. Let's do it. Enough thinking. Right now, I just have to counter the intruder. First of all, I need a weapon. Even though I'm a magus, all I can do is strengthen something that could be a weapon. To fight, I need a weapon. The shed has lots of things that could become weapons, but it's too far away. If I'm attacked when I leave the living room, it'll just be a repeat of what happened earlier. It'll be difficult, but I have to find a weapon here. Something long and thin would be best. My opponent's weapon is a lance, so something like a knife won't do. It'd be great if there was a wooden sword or something, but of course, there's nothing. If anything here could be a weapon, it's... And only the poster Fujine left here. I'm disappointed. But despite that, I'm determined even in this hopeless situation. Things are already as bad as they can be, so they can't get any worse. So all I have to do is run forward until I've run out of energy. Trace. On. With the words that suggest my reconstruction, I channel my magical energy into the 60 centimeter long poster. I have to turn it into something that can repel that lance, so I need to channel magical energy into every corner and solidify it. As a 
quality. Analyze. I extend my consciousness. As if soaking my blood into the poster through my skin, I permeate magical energy into it. It's a quality. Reinforce. A sense that I've hit the bottom. Right before the magical energy overflows from it. Trace. Off. Cut off all connection with the poster and shudder at the feeling of success. The poster is now as hard as metal. But it is light as it was before. But it is as light as it was before. So I couldn't ask for a better sword. I did it. How many years has it been since I last succeeded the strengthening magic? It's kind of ironic. The magic I've never been able to achieve since Kiritsugu died is finally working in this kind of a situation. So now, I might be able to do something. I have some knowledge of how to use a sword. I hold the poster with both hands and stand up. I'll die anyway if I stay here, and I don't think I'd be able to flee even if I escape this house. So all I can do is run straight to the shed and make a stronger weapon. <sighs> come if you're gonna come. It won't be like before. In the instant I think that... <laughs> my whole spine shivers. When did he arrive? Appearing from the ceiling, the guy drops straight at me. What? Huh? Silver light descends upon me. The guy, the guy that seems to have come straight through the ceiling descends to pierce my head. You! <laughs> I frantically escape by rolling forward. He lands softly while I keep rolling, but I stop rolling and stand with my freshly made sword in hand. He turns to face me, being bored. You're causing unnecessary troubles. I was being considerate by killing you before you noticed me. He raises his lance again, seemingly uninterested. I don't know why, but he lacks the spirit he had at the school ground. In that case, I might be able to outwit him. Jeez. Never thought I'd kill the same person twice in one day. Guess it just means the human world's always filled with bloodshed. Man's complaining as if he thinks nothing of me. I slowly move backwards. It's about three more meters to the window. Once out the window, it's about twenty meters to the shed. Then I can run off this instant. See ya. Don't come back this time, kid. He says blankly as if sighing it out. <laughs> Pain assails my right arm. It happened in an instant. The man's lance is thrust, without time for me to react. I would have faced my second death without blow, but what prevented it was my newly made sword. I must have thought it was just paper. The lance, thrust as if the poster wasn't there, was deflected by it and only skimmed my right arm. Wow. It's a strange technique you've got there. The man's expression goes away. His carelessness disappears, and he's now staring at me with beast-like eyes. <laughs> I screwed up. I was just being stupidly optimistic when I thought I could do something. The thing before me is a monster beyond belief. Painfully, I realized my foolishness for letting my guard down even slightly against him. That's right. If I'd been really desperate, I should have ran frantically to the window as soon as I miraculously avoided his first attack. I thought you were just a kid, but I see. I do feel some magical energy from you, even though it's weak. It must be why you're alive even after I stabbed you through the heart. He points his lance at me be able to block it. I can't possibly block that lightning-fast blow. If this weapon were a sword, I might have been able to at least prepare for it. That's a lance. The sword follows a line, but a lance has a point. Am I supposed to block a blow from a point that I can't even see coming? Good. Looks like I might be able to have a little fun. The man's body descends. In that instant, his lance is swung sideways. I block the lance coming at my face with just my instincts. <laughs> Good boy. Here comes the next one. There's a huge whirlwind. I don't know how he's moving the lance in this small room, but it makes a beautiful arc and... <laughs> comes to attack my body from the other side. <laughs> my, my constructed sword moved to stop it. Bends. Is he using a hammer? Damn. This numbness feels like I've broken the bones in my arm. Damn you! Huh? I swing the sword instinctively. He must take me lightly as he hasn't pulled back his lance, so I flick away the shaft with my sword. The arm that hit the arms that hit it go numb. The sword bends even more, and the man's lance only moves slightly. You're useless. I gave you a chance, but you didn't do anything worthwhile. Well, I guess it's asking too much to expect a good armed fight from Amagus. The man was just playing with me. 
he let me hit him once since I blocked him twice. But I used up my one and only chance for just a makeshift attack. That's why he sees no point in fighting me anymore. You've let me down. I'll just kill you now, kid. Ready's his lance again. Say, bring that small unnecessary movement. Say, what you want, idiot! Without looking behind me, I jump out the window. <sighs> I break the window with my back and roll outside. I roll a few times, get up and... <sighs> Without a thought, I turn and swing behind me. <clears throat> the man hesitates a moment as I deflected his lance thrust. As I expected. If I jumped out the window, he'd definitely come after me. And he'd kill me before I could even get up. That's why I expected the fatal blow and swung at it. It was a bold plan. I would have died if it was a second too late or a second too early. Considering the difference in our skill, it never have been too early. So all I had to do was get up as fast as possible and swing at what was coming behind me. The result was perfect. When my bet deflected the man's lance. <sighs> ah! I quickly regained my balance. Now I just have to make it to the shed before he recovers. Fly. <gasps> the man who supposedly had his lance knocked away comes up to me empty-handed and spins and executes a roundhouse kick. The scenery flies past me. My battered chest is numb and I can't breathe. No, what's more surprising is I'm flying. I never in my dreams thought that I'd be sent flying by a mere roundhouse kick. Gah! I fall to the ground from my back. I hit a wall and come crashing down. <coughs> Can't breathe. My vision's blurred. I manage to stand, supporting myself against the wall of my destination, the shed. <coughs> I track the man with my blurry vision. He must have been kicked 20 meters. The man approaches, lance in hand. I'll be killed. I'll definitely be killed. The man will be here in a second. If I don't want to die now, I have to get up and face him. The lance comes out at me. I can't even turn around fully, and my collapsing body faces the man's lance. Damn. You're a man. Keep yourself together. How fortunate. I got, as lucky. I got lucky as I couldn't hold myself up and my knees collapsed. The lance goes over my head and hits the door of the shed, opening it. Ugh. So this is my last chance. If I go in the shed, there should be something that I could use as a weapon. <laughs> I enter the shed on all fours. There. Here. This is it! A fatal, inescapable blow is thrust. You! And I block it. I unroll the poster and make it into a one-time shield. <clears throat> a huge impact. The opened up poster did block the lance, but it was not strong enough. It's pierced through and transforms back into its original paper. Yeah, no! I hit by the impact of the thrust lance. I'm flung to the wall. Ugh. I fall on my butt and recover myself. And I raise my head to try to find a weapon. Checkmate. Pretty surprising move, kid. The man is pointing the lance at me. This is it. The man's lance is pointed directly at my heart. I know this. This is the smell of death I felt just a few hours ago. I don't understand. You're quick-witted, but you suck at magic. Seems like you have a talent, but I guess you're just too young. I can't hear him. My mind is focused only on the weapon in front of me. It's only natural. I guess I'll die when that thing is thrust. So everything else has gone from my mind. What else can I think about now that things have ended up like this? It's unlikely, but maybe you were the seventh one. Well, this is it for you, even if that's the case. The man's arm moves. The moment I couldn't even see before looks like it's in slow motion now. A running silver light. The spearhead moves straight for my heart. It will spill blood the next second. I know this feeling. The feeling of metal running into me. The taste of blood coming at my throat. The sense of the world around me disappearing. I felt all of it earlier. And I have to experience it again? Really? I don't understand. Why do I have to go through this? This is bullshit. I can't accept this. I can't just die here meaninglessly. I was saved. I was saved, so I can't die so easily. I have to live and fulfill my obligations. If I die, I can't do that. 
The lance will pierce me. The spearhead will cut into my flesh and pierce my heart. Pierce my heart. It pisses me off. It's ridiculous to kill someone that easily. It's ridiculous for me to die so easily. I'm twice in one day. That's ridiculous as well. Damn. Everything's so screwed up that I can't contain it all and... Damn it. I... won't be killed meaninglessly. By someone like you! Huh? Truly, it... What? Appeared like magic. A blinding light appears from behind me. My mind stops. All I know is that the figure who appeared is a girl. The moment it appears, it repels the lance thrust at my heart and steps up to the enemy without hesitation. Can it be? The seventh servant? The man readies his deflected lance and the girl swings something she's holding. Sparks fly twice. A strong swing. The man hesitates, receiving a heavy blow from the girl. <coughs> he must have realized he's at a disadvantage as he jumps out of the shed with bestial speed. Keeping her guard up against the man, she quietly turns to me. The wind is strong today. Clouds drift and the moon appears for a brief moment. The silver light that shines into the shed lights up the girl in nightly form. Speechless. Not because I'm confused by the sudden turn of events. I'm at a loss for words because of this girl's overwhelming beauty. The girl stares at me emotionlessly with her jewel-like eyes. I ask of you, are you my master? She says in a valiant voice. Uh, master? I only repeat back her words. I don't know who she is or what she's talking about. All I know is that this small girl is the same kind of being as the man outside. The girl says nothing, just stares at me silently. How can I put this? The figure in front of me is so special that I forget the situation. The man outside could come and attack at any second. It feels like time has stopped just around me. The fear of death disappeared. And only the girl fills my vision. I, Servant Saber, have come forth in response to your summons. Please, give me an order, Master. She speaks again. The instant I hear the words Master and Servant. <clears throat> a pain shoots through my left hand. It's like a hot iron's been placed on my hand. I grab my left hand instinctively. It must have been the signal, as the quiet girl or as the girl quietly nods her lovely face. From this time forth, my sword but from this time forth, my sword shall be with you, and your fate shall be with me. Now, our contract is complete. Contract? What are you talking about? Even I have some non knowledge of magic. I understand what that word means. But the girl doesn't answer me, and looks away with the same grace she had when she nodded. She looks at the door of the shed. There stands the man, his lance ready in his hand. She moves faster than I can think. The nightly girl leaps out of the shed without hesitation. <laughs> I get up and follow the girl, even forgetting the pain in my body. There's no way that girl will be a match for him. Even armored like that, she's a girl smaller than me. Stop! The words are silenced by the sound. What? I can't believe my eyes. This time my head really goes blank. A tall saber, she's 411. Is she? The sound of weapons. The moon is hidden behind the clouds. The yard has returned to its original darkness. In it, sparks are born from steel hitting steel. A lance wielding man wordlessly attacks the girl who jumped out of the shed. The girl parries the blow with the lance, and knocks away all following attacks, driving the man back with every blow. I can't believe it. The girl called Saber is overpowering that man. The battle's begun. What happened between me and him earlier wasn't a battle. A battle is a fight between two people who can kill each other. Whatever the difference in skills, if each has a way to kill the other, then you can call it a battle. Their fight is a battle in that sense, too. A man's lance that I couldn't even see is thrown with even more power. But... The girl parries it with a thing in her hands and closes in on the man. The man retreats a bit, 
He holds his lance vertically to protect his ribs as the girl goes for them. <laughs> for a moment, the man's lance glows. There's a blow like an explosion. I guess it really was one. The instant the man blocks the thing the girl's holding, the lance in his hand glows as if electrified. The man, and even I, can tell what that is. That's a force of magical energy so strong that it's visible. And each of the girl's blows is a terrible amount of magical energy. An outrageous amount of magical energy is penetrating the opponent's weapon just by touching it. It's such a thing. It takes such force just to block it. Think of the man's lance as an accurate sniper rifle. The blows of the girl are like those of a powerful shotgun. Every time the girl swings, the yard is filled with light. But that isn't what's overpowering the man. Coward! What are you doing hiding your weapon? The man complains while avoiding the girl's fierce attacks. The girl doesn't answer, but only attacks even more of the thing in her hands. You! The man retreats with not even a chance for a counterattack, because the girl's weapon is invisible. As he cannot sense her range, it would be careless to attack recklessly. Yes, it's invisible. The, girl's defi oh, the girl definitely has something in her hand. But as you can't see what shape it is, nor how long it is, you can't tell anything about it. Perhaps it's totally invisible, because it doesn't show up even when sparks fly off from it. Damn. The man must be having a hard time defending against it, as his moves aren't as sharp. And the girl lets out a voice for the first time. She swings her weapon with more fury. A storm swings without pause. Flying sparks remind me of a blacksmith hitting iron. The lance wielding man blocks them, plucking his tongue. I must say, I admire his skills even though he tried to kill me. The man's blocking invisible blows, watching only the opponent's legs and arms. <coughs> but that's it. You only need to beat down someone who's gone defensive. As if to say so, the girl steps even closer to the man and delivers a blow with all her might, as just smashing him down. Don't underestimate me, fool! He must see this as his opportunity as the man disappears. No, he jumped back, making it look like he dis making it look like he disappeared. The girl's blow cuts through the air and destroys the ground, kicking up dust. The blow swung as a final one, was easily dodged. Idiot, what is she doing? Oh idiot, what is she doing? I can tell you from a distance. I don't know about the careful blows from before, but such a big blow won't be able to touch that man. Even that man's body must have been straining under all those attacks. We suppressed it for an instant and jumped away. As if this blow will determine the victor. Huh? Oh. <laughs> the man who jumped back several meters jumps as soon as he lands. As if reversing his retreat, he jumps at the girl. In contrast, the girl still has her sword in the ground. <laughs> that opening is irrevocable. The red lance returns in less than a second and the girl twirls her body with the sword still on the ground. <laughs> so the contest lasts less than a second. The man sees his mistake and tries to hold back while the girl uses her whole body to execute her blow. <laughs> the man blown away. The man is blown away. Oh no, the man blown away and the girl who blew him away both seem discontent. They, they each launched their blows to kill the other. Even if they allowed them to escape immediate danger, they were worthless. Their distance opens. The two stare at each other silently. What's wrong, Lancer? It would not do your name credit if you just stand there. If you will not come, I can. Huh. You're gonna come and die? I don't mind, but let me ask you this first. Your noble phantasm, is it a sword? The man glares, as if staring right into her heart. Who knows? It might be a battle axe, or it might be a spear. It might even be a bow, Lancer. <laughs> Keep talking, Saber. Perhaps it's really funny for him. The man, the one called Lancer, lowers his lance. Looks like he's indicating he doesn't want to fight anymore. The girl is puzzled by Lancer's action, but I know that stance. It was used in that fight a few hours ago in the schoolyard. It's the fatal move that was supposed to have ended the show. I'll ask just in case, since this is our first meeting. Do you want to call it even? It's not a bad deal, right? See, that senile master over there is useless, and it so happens my master is a coward. I think it's in both our interests to hold off on this match until we're better prepared. I refuse. You'll fall here, Lancer. I see. Jeez. All I wanted to do was check things out, you know. 
I didn't want to stay long once a servant came out. It seems like the air around them distorted. Lancer lowers his stance. A chill runs through the air at that moment. It's exactly like back then. The magical energy rumbles in a whirlpool, centered on that lance. Noble phantasm. The girl readies her apparent sword and glares at the enemy in front of her. The girl, facing the enemy, knows better than I how dangerous he is. See ya. I'll take that heart of yours. The beast jumps. Lancer instantly appears in front of the girl, as if he teleported, and thrusts his lance at the girl's feet. It was a bad move, even in my eyes. With the lance already lowered, it wouldn't be effective to aim low at the girl. To prove my point, the girl jumps over the lance and moves forward to slash Lancer away. At that moment... Gay? With words themselves charged with magical energy. Bulk! The lance thrust at the girl's feet rushes towards her heart. <laughs> her body rises into the air. The girl is driven up <laughs> driven up into the air by the blow of the lance, and she crashes down. No. Lands on the ground. <laughs> She's bleeding. The girl, who hasn't even received a scratch so far, is bleeding badly from her chest. A curse. No, a reversal of causality. I'm surprised too. No, since I saw it from a distance, I can tell better than her that the attack just now is a strange one. The lance was definitely aimed at her feet, but suddenly changed its course, moving strangely in an impossible direction and pierced the girl's heart. The lance itself has not grown or bent. It looks so natural that it makes one think the lance was already in her heart. And for that reason, it's strange. It's not as simple as the lance changing its course and piercing her heart. The lance didn't change its course, but it changed the means so that the result would be so. The lance thrust with that name carried the result of piercing her heart as a, present, as a premise. In other words, the process and the result were reversed. As long as there was a, as long as there was the as long as there was the result of the lance piercing her heart, the course of the lance was merely something added later to prove that fact. An evil thorn that breaks through all defenses. A lance that pierces the heart every time it's used. A weapon that determines your fate just by its use. And even blocks such a ridiculous attack. Wherever the enemy tries to dodge it, the lance will pierce their heart without fail. That's why this move is fatal. A cursed lance that always pierces opponents with one thrust. But the girl has evaded it by a small margin. She's wounded, but it wasn't a fatal blow. In a sense, her actions were more impossible than the lance. The instant the lance was thrust, she turned and jumped back with all her might, as if she knew this was going as if she knew this was going to happen. Either she had incredible luck, or enough divine protection to nullify the curse of the lance. Either way, she avoided a fatal blow and sullied the lance's name. <sighs> the girl catches her breath. The blood that was running so much has stopped, and even her stabbed wound is healing. I guess that's extraordinary. I knew she wasn't normal, but still, that's too strange. Like her skills to fight against Lancer, like the incredible magical energy in each of her blows, and like her body that heals by itself, this girl clearly surpasses Lancer. That was only up to now. Even if it's healing, the wound is deep. Lancer attacks her now, will be defeated without, without even being able to defend herself. But with this overwhelming advantage, Lancer doesn't move. He glares at the girl, grinding his teeth so hard that I can hear it. Faded its saber, my fatal gay bulg. A voice that seems to echo from the ground. Hulk, you are Ireland's man of light. Lancer frowns. His hostility disappears, and he clucks his tongue in annoyance. <sighs> I screwed up. If I'm gonna use this move, it needs to be fatal. Jeez, I guess being famous is bad too. Pressure goes away. Lancer doesn't even attack the wounded girl, and simply turns his back and moves to the edge of the yard. The rule of servants to fight to the death for your identity is discovered. Unfortunately, my master's a coward. He's telling me to go back since you've evaded my lance. You're running away, Lancer? Yeah. I don't mind if you come after me, Saber. 
Just be prepared to die when you do. With one bound, Lancer easily jumps over the wall and disappears. Wait, Lancer! The wounded girl starts to, starts running to pursue the enemy. Is she stupid? I run through the yard with all my strength. The girl will go after him if I don't stop her instantly. There was no need for that. When the girl tries to jump over the wall, she clenches her chest and stops. <coughs> I run to her and stare at her. No, I try to approach her to call out to her. Forget about I forget about it the instant I come near her. But it's simply... Everything about her is absurd. Now that I'm near her, I can tell the shining armor she wears is really heavy. The old-fashioned cloth is smooth, vivid blue. No, that isn't what fascinates me. The girl, who seems to be a few years younger than me, is beautiful. The golden hair lit by the moonlight is finely textured, as if sprinkled with gold dust. The face, with some sign of naivety, is elegance her white skin looks soft. I can't call out to her because I'm fascinated by her beauty. And also for another reason. Why? Because seeing the girl fighting and getting hurt somehow made me mad. All the while I'm fascinated with her, the girl has her hand on her chest. That ends quickly. The girl lets her chest go and looks up as if the pain has gone away. She stares directly at me. I'm not sure how I should talk to her, but I notice something about her. Is gone? Even though it missed her heart, that lance stabbed her in the chest. She's unscathed. A bit of healing magics, but I didn't see her using anything like that. So that must mean she automatically heals even when she's wounded. Then my brain switches gear. This is no time to be fascinated by her. She's a strange being. I can't let my guard down until I know what she is. Who are you? I take half a step back and ask her. What do you mean? I'm the Servant Saber. You summoned me, so I don't think you should need to confirm it. Servant Saber? Yes, so please call me Saber. She replies without hesitation. Her tone is polite yet gentle, and just hearing it makes my head go blank. Uh, hey, what am I getting excited about? I see. That's a strange name. I hide my burning face with my hand and reply really stupidly. I don't know what else to say. I wouldn't know of any such thing to say. Since I asked her name, isn't it natural for her to introduce herself? In that case, it'd be impolite to stay silent like this. I'm Shiro. My name's Emi Ashiro, and I live in this house. What am I doing? Are my answers getting stupider? But she told me her name, so I should answer too. I know I'm confused right now, but I have to be polite no matter who this is. The girl. Saber just stares at me without changing her expression. No, wait, I take that back. That's not what I meant to ask you. Actually, I know. You're not a formal master, correct? Huh? But you are still my master. As long as we've made a contract, I will not betray you. There's no need for you to be so cautious. Uh... Crap. I can hear her words, but they make no sense to me. All I know is that she's calling me with a ridiculous word like master. That's wrong. My name isn't master. Then I shall call you Shiro. Yes. I like the sound of that better. <laughs> as soon as she says my name, I think my face lit up on fire. Shouldn't you call someone by their last name on a first meeting? Wait a minute. Why are you calling me- Ow! Keen suddenly runs through my left hand. It's burning. The back of my hand is burning. My hand feels like it's in a fire. And on it is a strange mark that looks like a tattoo. Ugh. That's called a command spell, Shiro. It's th it is the three claims on a servant's obedience, and the life of a master. Please do not use it thoughtlessly. Ooh. Before I can finish with are you, the air around her changes. Shiro, heal my wounds. She speaks in a cold voice. It seems her attention is on something far away, behind the wall. And not on me. Wait, you're asking me? I'm sorry, but I don't know any such difficult magic. Besides, it's already healed. Saber frowns a bit. I think I said something really wrong there. And I shall face them as I am now. The regeneration only healed the outside, but one more fight should not be a problem. 
One more what? There are two enemies outside. Judging by their presence, it should only take a few seconds to defeat them. Saying so, Saber jumps slightly. Just like Lancer, she leaps over the wall and disappears outside. I'm left alone in the yard. He's outside? As soon as I say it aloud, I realize what it means. Hold on! Are you gonna fight again? My body starts to move. Without thinking, I run to the gate with full force. I run to the gate, unlock it with trembling hands, and jump outside. Saber! Where are you? I search through the dark. The moon is hidden, now of all times. It's completely dark. But... Here's something nearby. There! I run to the small road with no sign of anyone on it. Half it all happens in an instant. Saber's confronting a familiar guy in red. Saber runs at the man in red without hesitation, takes his guard down with one blow, and... Easily slashes the man in red. Saber raises her arm to finish him off. But right before the man in red's neck is slashed, he disappears as a foul- a, a foul? A powerful magic is cast. Saber doesn't stop. She dashes to the person behind the man in red and easily cuts off the large spell the person launches. The, I knew she was strong, but this is overwhelming. That spell right now is at a level of intervention magic that I can't even compare with. Father could use one as strong as that, but to cast a natural intervention of that power instantly, I don't think even a first-class magus could do so. But Saber nullified that magic- <laughs> Thanks, Mamako. Thank you so much. For some reason, she gave me three, three shrimp in a bowl. Just three of them. She ran in and gave me shrimp and then left. <laughs> scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh my god, my heart's racing. <laughs> Okay. <clears throat> Saber, Saber, Saber nullified even that masterclass magic. The enemy must be a Magus, as the match is decided right there. The Magus' attacks are no use against Saber. She mercilessly attacks the Magus. The sound of someone falling backwards. The Magus has miraculously dodged Saber's blow. The enemy now cannot move. Saber corners the enemy and points her invisible sword. My mind freezes. Probably because the moon lights up the scene for an instant. I can tell that the figure Saber is pointing at is human. I can't tell who it is. The image of Saber killing someone and getting splattered with blood pops into my head. Saber moves. She will pierce the enemy's throat with the thing in her hand. STOP! SABER! I scream as loud as I can. Sword stops. God, I can't see her sword. The end of her invisible sword isn't- The end of her invisible sword isn't wet with the enemy's blood. Don't. Please don't do it, Saber. I address her, glaring. Preparing myself to do my best to stop her. Why do you stop me, Shiro? She is Archer's master. We have to kill her here. No, Saber has no intention of stopping. She only stopped because I said so. She's ready to bring down her sword at any time. I I'm telling you to wait! You're calling me master, but I don't understand anything at all. If you're gonna call me that, I think you should at least- at least explain- you should explain things to me first. I can't talk. Saber doesn't answer. She only stares at me in silence. You're doing this in the wrong order, Saber. I still don't understand who you are, but I'll listen if you talk, so please don't do this. Saber's silent. Still pointing her sword at the fallen enemy. She looks at me discontentedly. What do you mean by that? Are you demanding ideals like not hurting anyone necessarily? Huh? Not hurting anyone unnecessarily? Well, it is true that we should avoid fights as much as possible, but I'm not so good-natured as to release someone who came to attack me. So you are saying, do not take life even if it is that of the enemy, correct? I will not obey such an order. An enemy is someone you must defeat. If you still want me to stop, make me obey with your command spell. I'm talking about you! A girl shouldn't be swinging swords around, all the more so if you're hurt. Oh, wait, I don't even know if it's a sword or not, huh? Anyway, you can't do that! Saber looks dumbfounded, as if taken aback. 
How long were we standing like that? So? When will Saber- So? When will Saber-san lower her sword? The figure on the ground suddenly speaks. Saber suddenly concentrates her attention on her sword. Give up. I have no sword to lower in front of an enemy. Even if your master says to lower it? Wow, so even Saber would betray her master, huh? Saber grits her teeth. Saber lowers her sword, relaxes. Saber's hostility disappears. She must have put away her sword as well. Shwimp. <laughs> oh, they're good. They're a pretty good shrimp. Hey, she came out because she heard about shrimp. Hey, baby cat. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Let me drink some water. <clears throat> Don't listen to my eating noises, weirdo. Saber's hostility disappears, so she must have put away her sword as well. I see. Then I can stand up, right? The one on the ground stands up. She looks shameless, brushing her rear. Hey, wait a second. That sulky person is definitely- What?! You- You're Tosaka! Yes. Good evening, Anya-kun. Osaka Reen replies with a big smile. Uh, uh? That gets me. She greets me normally like that, and everything that happened up till now seems like a bad dream, and... No, my head's about to explode. Jeez, how easy would things be if it did? Um, uh, no, well... Uh, so... You were using magic right now, so that means... I'm a Magus. Well, we're the same, so it's not something I need to hide. <laughs> when she replies clearly like that, it makes me feel stupid for asking. Let's talk inside. You don't know anything, right, Emiyaku? So saying, she walks toward the entrance. Wait, what are you thinking? And then she turns, and the smile on her face isn't like the previous one. Are you stupid? I'm thinking about a lot of things. That's why I want to talk to you. Emiyakun, it's good to be surprised by sudden turns of events, but it could sometimes cost you your life if you don't just accept it. Incidentally, do you understand that now is one of those times? She glares at me. <laughs> it's fine if you understand, so let's go to your place. Sosaka goes through the gate. She's really pissed. It's only natural. She had a sword pointed at her until now- MIA! Oh, you can't be on the desk, baby girl. I'm sorry. You mu you skipped my game. No. It's only natural. She had a sword pointed at her until now. She was almost killed. So, I'm in a strange situation. In front of me is the school's number one idol, whom I admire, Tosaka Rin. And following silent behind me is Saber, who calls herself a servant. Oh. The hallway suddenly feels like a different dimension. Don't Oh, she wants to be let out of the room. Okay, I can do that for you at least. Hold on. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wow, wow, wow. <laughs> you let her skip? I did not. I did not. But I can't be a coward forever. I'm a magus, even if I am just an amateur. Tosaka Rin, a magus li just like me, is acting so fearlessly, so I have to act firmly too. But uh, I can only work out a few things. First, about Saber, who's following me. I'm sure that she's some kind of a familiar, because she calls me master and I've made a contract with her. I hear that a familiar is some kind of an assistant for a magus. Most magi transfer parts of their body into something and summon it as another self. For the other self, a magus usually uses a small animal. That's simply because it's easy to take over the mind of something like a cat or a dog. Some magi use a human as their familiar, but they need enough magical energy to restrain a human at all times if they do such a thing. But if one constantly uses enough magical energy to control someone, 
It would take most of the Magus' magical energy to sustain the familiar. But that'd be putting the cart before the horse. The familiar is something that assists the Magus. To reduce the, bur the burden on the Magus, it's commonly accepted that small animals are most suitable. So I've been taught, but... Hmm? What is it, Shiro? No, it's... it's nothing. Saber looks human no matter how you look at her. She's clearly superior to me, her master. I don't have the magical energy to control such a person. And more than that, I don't have the magic circuit to summon a familiar. So Saber must be something rather unlike familiar. She said she's a servant. I don't know what that is, but I think the man called Lancer and the man in red with Tosaka were the same thing. Then it must be that Tosaka is also called a master. I just saw her magic skills. I'm worth half a Magus. She's worth about three Magi. Oh, if I am worth. Though, of course, there's no point in comparing me to other Magi when I can only use the strengthening magic. Anyway, Tosaka is an amazing Magus. Amazing Magus? Amazing Magus. In any spiritually superior land, is a family of Magi that looks after that land. The Emiya family only came to this land in Kiritsugu's generation, so we're just strangers. That's why I didn't know that the Tosakas were Magi, and I don't think Tosaka knew that the Emias were a family of Magi either. There are several Magi in this town that I don't know about. If Lancer's the familiar of another Magus in this town, does that mean that I stuck my head into a conflict between Magi? Well, it's pretty big. Japanese style's unusual for me. Oh, is that the living room, Emiya-kun? Saying so, Tosaka goes into the living room. Stop thinking for now. Let's just listen to Tosaka's story. Can someone cap, let's stop thinking for now, and put it as text below my face? I love those kinds of memes. Hold on, I'm having another shrimp. Mmm. Mmm. -hmm. Very tasty. <laughs> Don't listen. I'm chaunching. One shrimp remains. That'll be my my treat for finishing reading this day. Depending how long it goes. I turn the lights on. It's already past one in the morning. Oh, it's so cold! What's this? The windows are broken? Couldn't help it. I was attacked by this Lancer guy. I was just desperate. Oh, I see. And were you fighting him alone until you summoned Saber? I didn't fight him, he just beat me up. <laughs> Thank you so much, Wolfor. <laughs> oh, so you don't try to show off, huh? See, I see. You're really just as you appear, Emiya-kun. Tosaka walks over to the broken window. Tosaka takes a piece of the shattered glass, takes a look at it, and... Minuten vor Schweissen. She cuts the tip of her finger and puts a drop of her blood onto the glass. <laughs> what kind of magic is this? The shattered glass combines on its own and restores itself in a matter of seconds. Tosaka, that was... It's just a small demonstration. It won't be enough to repay you for saving me, but I have to at least do this much. Well, I'm sure you would have fixed it even if I hadn't. But that's just a waste of magical energy, right? All you really have to do is replace the window, but we don't want to talk at this cold, do we? She says so as if it's something natural. But needless to say, her skills are beyond my understanding. No, that's amazing, Tosaka. I can't do that sort of thing, so I'm glad you fixed it. Huh? There's no way you can't fix it. Handling glass is so elementary. Restoring glass that broke a few minutes ago is only like an admission test for any school, right? So that's how it is? I was only taught stuff by my father, so I don't even know the basics or the elementary stuff. Huh? Tosaka freezes. Damn it. it. Seems I said something I shouldn't have. Wait, then you're saying you're just an amateur who can't even run your run your own workshop? Huh? I don't have a workshop. Well, I do have that shed as my training area, but I think Tosaka would get mad if I called that my workshop. I think it's impossible, but I'll ask anyway. Could 
Maybe that you don't know how to handle the five main elements or how to make a pass. I honestly admit that I don't know. Wow. Scary. She's so beautiful usually, so she looks pretty scary now. Then what are you? Just an amateur? That's not true. I can at least use strengthening magic. Strengthening. It's an awfully odd magic. So you can't do anything under other than that? Osaka glares at me. Well, to be honest, probably not. Glare makes my answer big. Jeez. Why did Seaver get summoned to a guy like this? She sighs. <laughs> makes me mad. I haven't been playing around. I know I'm an amateur, but I don't think it matters right now. Well, I don't care. There's no point in complaining about what's already happened. More importantly, I have to pay back my debt right now. Osaka takes a breath. Well, I'll begin. Emiya-kun, you don't know what kind of situation you're in right now, correct? I nod. I thought so. Well, I could tell easily, but I have to confirm, right? It's only putting flab on my mind if I tell someone that already knows about it. Hmm? I think that was a weird phrase, but I stay quiet as I think she'll beat me up if I make fun of her now. To put it bluntly, you've been chosen as a master. You have a holy sign on one of your hands, right? On your hand or on your arm. There are personal differences, but there should be three command spells engraved. That's the sign of a master. On my hand. Oh, this. Yes, that's also a spell that rules the servant, so take care of it. It's called a command spell, and you can retain control over your servant as long as you have it. What do you mean, as long as I have it? The command spell is an item of unconditional obedience. I think you've already realized that servants have their own will, but that mark overrules their will and makes them obey your command. There's no spell needed to activate it, and it'll be activated when you put your mind to using it. But you'll use one for every time you you'll lose one for every time you use it, so make sure you only use it twice. If you lose all your command spells, you'll be killed, so be careful. What? I'll, I'll be killed? That's right. It's fundamental in the Holy Grail War for masters to kill other servants. And the master that kills the other six masters is awarded with the Holy Grail. What? Hold on. I don't understand what Tosaka's talking about at all. Like, the part about masters killing other masters. And the part where the winner gets a Holy Grail. Wait, does she mean that Holy Grail? Still don't understand? To be... Uh, to put... <laughs> To put it simply, you've been dragged into a game. A survival game between the Seven Masters. A game called the Holy Grail War. A battle royale between the Masters that won't end until you kill all the other Masters. Tosaka Reen states so as if it's the most natural thing in the world. Grace swirls in my head. I've been chosen as a Master. Tosaka says she's a Master. Familiars called the Servants. And a battle to the death between other Magi called the Holy Grail War. Wait. What is that? What are you talking about all of a sudden? I understand how you feel, but I'm just telling you the truth. Besides, you should understand deep down. You should know you're in a situation you can't run away from, having been almost killed by that servant twice now. That's... Certainly, I was almost killed by that Lancer guy, but... Oh no, that's wrong. In fact, you weren't almost killed. You were actually killed. I'm surprised you're alive again. Tosaka's comment finishes me off. That's right. That guy killed me. I certainly died. No excuse nor negotiation was possible. I was just someone who had to be killed. So, even if I do deny this battle to the death that I can't understand, the others in it won't, won't withdraw. Do you get it now? Then I'll go on. I don't exactly know what the Holy Grail War is, but I know that every few decades, seven masters are chosen and given servants. I'm also a I'm also chosen as a master. That's why I made a contract with the servant, and you made a contract with Saber. Think of the servant as a familiar, given to you by the Holy Grail to win the Holy Grail War. And as masters, we're to work together with our servant to kill other masters. Tosaka's description is too brief for me to understand. But there's one thing I do wonder about. Hold on. You say Saber's a familiar, but I'm not convinced. Familiars are things like cats and birds, right? Well, I do hear that some use human ghosts, but Saber has a body. Besides, she doesn't look like a familiar. 
I glance at Saber. <laughs> Saber's quietly listening to our conversation. It's just like a human being. I don't know her identity, but she's a girl about my age. Just having a girl like that near me is more than enough. So I don't get it when she tells me that Saber's a familiar. Besides, my heart's pounding right now. Familiar, huh? Well, servants are in that category. They are on a different level. Because that girl over there is a ghost liner, considered to be the strongest of all familiars. Ghost liner? Do you mean she really is a ghost? A human ghost that stopped living a long time ago. The remaining minds of those with strong abilities, who remain in this world even after they die. That doesn't make sense. A ghost doesn't have a body. A ghost can only be hurt by ghosts. So, as I have a body, a ghost shouldn't be able to kill me. A ghost, huh? She's similar, but Saber, Saber would kill you if you compared her to one. Servants are heroes of the past given bodies. Beings surpassing humans, more like spirits. Huh? Heroes of the past given bodies? That's right. A legendary hero was pulled from the past or the present or whenever and given a body. Well, it's the role of the Master to summon them, and the Holy Grail does the rest. It's impossible for Amagus to give shape to a soul, so we're assisted by a strong artifact. Hold on, so... A hero of the past means... what? I look over at Saber. <laughs> and she's a heroine from the past, too? Well, it's true that nobody would dress like that now, but... That's impossible. I've never heard of any such magic. Of course not. This isn't magic. Think of it as a phenomenon created by the Holy Grail. It's impossible to recreate a soul and give it a body without it. The creation of the soul? Then a servant isn't a ghost? No. Haven't you been taught that any humans, animals, or machines that leave any great achievements behind get removed from the Ring of Reincarnation and sublimate into beings of higher rank? Heroic spirits are like that. To put it simply, they've been worshipped and made into artificial gods. Ghost magic, such as supplicating ghosts, uses her heroic spirits to make miracles happen. Hey, say that again? What the fuck? Sorry, okay, I'll have my other shrimp. But the servants are familiar to the heroes themselves, so they accompany you in spirit form, but if need be, you can give them form to make them fight. Hmm. So you mean you can give them form or keep them in spirit form? I don't see your servant, so he's in spirit form right now? No, he's healing his wounds in the summoning circle at my house right now. Saber wounded him just now, right? If I hadn't withdrawn him by force, he would have had his head chopped off. Look, the only ones who can beat these servants are other servants. Spirits like them. Well, we can hit them too if they take form, so we might be able to beat them. But servants are all as strong as monsters, right? So, we let monsters deal with monsters. The master usually supports them from behind. Hmm. Tosaka's explanation irritates me for some reason. She calls them monsters. I don't know about the other servants, but I don't want her to talk about Saber like that. Anyway, someone who becomes a master must kill all the other masters using a servant. Do you understand it so far? In words, yeah, but I'm not convinced. To begin with, who started such a thing? Why? That's not something I know about, nor should I answer. You should put that kind of question to the one overseeing the Holy Grail War. The only thing I can tell you is that all you can do now is fight. And servants are powerful familiars, so you should use them wisely. Tosaka says so, and now turns to Saber. So, from what I hear from Emmy Akun, you must not be in full form, Saber. You were summoned by an apprentice magus who has no idea how to be a master. Yes, I'm not in full form, as you say. Since Shiro does not have the magical energy to give me form, it will be difficult for me to turn into a spirit or to replenish my magical energy. I'm surprised. I'm surprised that you were in that bad of a state, but I didn't think you'd tell me honestly. I was wondering how I ought to find out your weakness. 
I do not wish to let others know of my weakness, but I do not think I can fool you. It would be meaningless to hide our situation from you. So it would be better for us to tell you of our situation, and to have Shiro better understand the situation he is in right now. Correct. And you have a good personality, too. Jeez, I'm regretting it even more now. If I was your master, I, I would have certainly won this war. Tosaka clenches her fists with anger. Mm. Tosaka, do you mean I'm not fit to be your master? Of course not, idiot. Wow. She just said something that any normal person would have trouble saying. What? Do you have any more questions? And she doesn't realize it. Her honor student image from school crumbles inside me. Get going, Issei. Tosaka sure... <laughs> Tosaka certainly shows no openings, just like a devil. Well, we're done talking, so let's get going. Tosaka suddenly says something strange. Huh? Go where? We're going to see the guy who knows all about the game you're involved in. The Holy Grail War. You want to know the reasons behind the Holy Grail War, right? Of course, but where is it? It's already late, so... It'll be fine. It's in the neighboring town, so we should be back by dawn if we hurry. And besides, it's Sunday tomorrow, so it should be fine for us to stay up late. No, that's not the problem. It's just that a lot of things happened today, so I want to have a rest and think about them. What? You're not going? Well, if you say so. But what about you, Saber? Tosaka asks Saber. Hold on, this has nothing to do with Saber. Don't push her. Oh, you're already feeling like a master? You don't want me talking to Saber? That's not it! It's just that if what you said is true, then Saber's a heroine from the past, right? So she wouldn't know about this time since she was just summoned. So... Shiro, that's wrong. Servants can adapt to any time. Oh, Shiro, that's wrong. Servants can adapt to any time, so I know a lot about this age as well. Really? Yes. This is not the first time I've been summoned in this age. What? Well, uh, no way! What are the chances of that? Hey, Tosaka's surprised too. That must mean Saber said something incredible. Shiro, I agree with her. You lack experience as a master. As a servant, making a contract with you, I want you to be stronger. Saber stares at me silently. It's a gentle stare that's worried not for herself, but for me. Alright. I'll go. So, where is this place, Tosaka? It's a place we can come back from, right? Of course. We're heading to Kotomini Church in the neighboring town. That's where the false priest, the one who oversees this battle, is living. Tosaka makes an evil smile. Looks like she's having fun dragging me around while I don't know anything. It might be prejudice, but I'm beginning to feel like there's a problem with her personality. We walk through the nighttime town. It's past one in the morning. There's no one out at this time. The lights in the houses are out, and the only street lamps illuminate the silent town. Hey. Tosaka, are you planning to walk to the neighboring town? Yeah, the buses and trains have stopped running. A walk at night is good once in a while, right? Let's see. Then, if I may ask, do you know how long it takes to get there? Well, it should take about an hour walking. If it gets late, we can always take a taxi. I don't waste that kind of money. Besides, what I mean is, it's dangerous for girls to walk around at a time like this. You know it's dangerous, right? I won't be responsible if something happens. Don't worry, no one's gonna mess with us. You may be forgetting, but Saber's really strong. Oh. She's right. Whoever it is, if someone attacks her, they'll be counterattacked viciously. <laughs> Rin, what was Shiro saying? I did not quite understand. Huh? Well, he was just making a big, big misunderstanding, or being plain stupid. He's saying he'll help us if some pervert appears. What? Shiro's my master. I should be protecting him instead. <laughs> I don't think he's thinking about that sort of thing. He seems unconcerned about magi and servants and all. I kind of wonder what's going on in his head. Osaka and Saber now know each other well enough to talk to each other. Saber's been silent ever since I stopped her from going out dressed like she was. She said she wouldn't take off her armor, so I made her wear a raincoat, and she's been quiet ever since. Now she follows me and only speaks to Tosaka. 
Wait, where are you going, Emiya-kun? Isn't that the wrong way? We need to get to the bridge, right? And this will be a shortcut. I don't want to walk alongside them, so I quickly made my way to the small side road. They follow me without objection. There. <laughs> we come out into a park. We have to cross that bridge to go into the neighboring town of Shinto, but... Wow, I didn't know about this road. I see, since you can get to the bridge from the park, all you have to do is head for the park. Maybe it's just because it's nighttime. Tosaka's face, looking up at the bridge, seems even more beautiful than at school. I'm troubled. Let's go. We didn't come here to play around. I hurry Tosaka, who's standing still in the park, and make my way up the stairs. Once we reach the road alongside the bridge, Shinto will be straight ahead of us. There's no one on the bridge. It's only natural, as not many people use it even during daytime. It's more normal to use the bus or the train to get to the neighboring town, so this bridge is rarely used. It's because it's so long and it carries a fear that it might collapse on you. That must be why this place isn't used for dates, even though it's perfect location-wise. Stupid. What am I thinking? Saber's following me silently, and Tosaka's walking right beside me. Trying to ignore them, I hurry across the bridge. Beyond the bridge, Tosaka leads us into the suburbs. When I think about Shinto, only the office buildings in front of the station come to mind, but there are streets from older times once you get away from the station. The suburbs are the most extreme of those. There are hilly roads and a high ground overlooking the sea. As you go farther up the hill, there are fewer buildings and the foreigner's cemetery built on the slope of the hill can be seen. The church is up there. You must have been there at least once, right? No, I know it used to be an orphanage, though. I see. Then it'll be your first time today. You should prepare yourself. The priest there is a difficult man to deal with. Tosaka starts up the hill. Looking up, I can see a bridge at the top of the hill. Or a building at the top of the hill, excuse me. A church atop the hill. I never thought I'd visit God's house for the first time for a reason like this. Wow. This is really awesome. The church is magnificent. The whole top of the hill must be the church's land, as a flat field welcomes me as soon as I reach the top. The church isn't that big, but it is compelling, towering over its visitors. Chiro, I will remain here. Huh? Why? I can't just leave you when we've come up here together. I did not come for the church. I followed to protect you. If your destination is the church, you should not go any farther. So I, sh <laughs> so I shall wait here for your return. Saber says clearly. It doesn't seem like she'll budge an inch, so I decide to respect her, deci her decision. All right, then I'll be going. Yes. Please do not let your guard down, whomever you are facing, Master. It's a large, impressive chapel. Since it's so large, many people must come here during the day. If he's entrusted with such a church, the priest here must be a man of character. Tosaka... What kind of a person is the priest here? It's kind of hard to explain. I've known him for ten years, but I still can't grasp his character. You've known him for ten years? It's a pretty long relationship. Is he a relative of yours or something? He's not my relative, but he is my guardian. On top of that, he's my senior as an apprentice, and my second teacher. Uh, senior as an apprentice? You mean apprentice as a magus? That's right. But why are you so surprised? Because he's a priest! Aren't priests forbidden to use magic? By their nature, by their nature, a magus in the church cannot be in harmony. The organization that magi belong to is called the Magic Association. And the other side of religion, the side you wouldn't see while living a normal life, is called the Holy Church. The two are barely similar. They cooperate in name, but they're always trying to kill each other when given the chance. The church hates heretics. They totally eliminate the inhuman and they count magic using humans as the targets. Among their targets. For the church, miracles are only given to chosen holy saints. Any miracles handled by other people are heresies. There are no exceptions, even for those within the church. The higher one rises in the church, the more one is prohibited from the impurity of magic. And for a follower entrusted with a church like this, and the more divine protection one receives, the more one should stay away from magic. No. First of all, is the priest here on our side? Yes. He's the one supervising the Holy Grail War, after all. 
He's a real agent. Well, I don't know if he has divine protection, though. Osaka's footsteps echo as she approaches the altar. It's bad manners to do that when the priest isn't here, but it's so late at night. He won't be in the chapel, so if he's anywhere, it'll be the private room in the back. Hmm. So, who's this priest? You said a name like Kotomine before. His name is Kotomine Kire. He's a student of my father, and we've had an inseparable relationship for ten years now. Well, I wish I'd never met him, though. I feel the same way. I did not want an apprentice who didn't respect your teacher. What step? He must have noticed our entry as he slowly appears from the other side of the altar. You didn't answer my repeated calls, and now you bring a strange guest. Hmm. So he's the seven, seventh one, Rin? He's so tall! Right. He's a magus, but he's pretty much a beginner, so I couldn't just let him be. I believe it was the rules to report here when one becomes a master, right? It's a rule you invented, but I'll follow it this time. Very well. Then I must thank this young man. The priest called Kotomine slowly turns to me. Without realizing, I step back. It's not scary at all. I don't feel any hostility from him. But this priest still has a presence that makes the air around him feel heavy. I am Kotomine Kire, the one entrusted with this church. What is your name, Seventh Master? Emi Ashiro, but I haven't agreed to this master thing yet. I glare back at the priest, trying not to lose against his presence. Emiya... Shiro. Huh? The weight on my back turns into a chill. The priest slowly smiles, as if he's met someone pleasant. That smile... makes me... I thank you, Emiya. You have bought, brought Ring here. If it were not for you, she would not have come. The priest makes his way towards the altar. Kosaka moves away from the altar and stands beside me. Then let us start. Emiya Shiro, you are Saber's master, correct? That's wrong. I certainly made a contract with her, but I don't understand this whole master and holy grail war thing. If a master should be a proper magus, then you should go and choose a more suitable person. I see. This is serious. Does he really know no <laughs> I can't do this, man. Does he really know nothing, Rin? I told you he's a beginner. Train him from the very first steps, will you? You're really good at that, right? Osaka urges the priest. Oh, I see, I see. That's how it is, huh? I understand. This is the first time you've ever depended on me. Emi Ashiro, I can never thank you enough. Father Kotomine laughs. The conversation makes me feel uneasy. First, let us correct your misunderstandings. Listen, Emi Ashiro. A master is not a role you can give to someone else, nor is it something you can stop being once you are chosen. Those who have those command spells carved on them cannot resign from being a master. You must accept that fact. Why can't I quit? The command spell is a holy mark. Becoming a master is a trial placed upon you. You cannot escape it just because it is inconvenient. You cannot be released from that pain until you obtain the Holy Grail. If you wish to retire from being a master, all you can do is obtain the Holy Grail and wish for it. If you do that, everything will be as you desire, Emiya Shiro. Your wishes, even cleaning out all the mud inside of you, is possible. Yes, it is even possible to start everything over again. Therefore, you should desire it. If the time comes, you will appreciate being chosen as a master. If you wish to erase those burns that cannot be seen, all you have to do is accept that holy mark. What? I feel dizzy. Priest's words don't make any sense. They just confuse me more and more as I listen. But still, his words soak into my brain and clot like blood. My alarm's going off, thank you. Kire, don't go off topic. I asked you to tell him the rules. I didn't ask you to open up his old wounds. A voice cuts in. Tosaka? It clears up my dizzy head. I see. So it's pointless to say anything to these kinds of people. Oh, it is pointless to say anything to these kinds of people, so I was trying to take away his morality while he still misunderstood. <laughs> I guess it's true that compassion is not good for others, and I rather enjoyed it, too. What? Does it do you good to help him? Of course. Helping people means saving yourself in the end. Well, it won't do any good to preach to you now. 
So, let us return to the main topic, Enyashiro. The battle you've been dragged into is called the Holy Grail War. Have you learned from Reem that this is an all-out war between seven masters using seven servants? I did. Some ridiculous thing where seven masters kill each other, right? Indeed. But we are not committing these inhuman acts because we want to. Everything is a ritual to determine who is the most suitable to receive the Holy Grail. Because of its greatness, we require trials to determine its owner. What trials? I'll bet this priest doesn't think of this Holy Grail War thing as a trial. Hold on, you keep saying Holy Grail War, but what is it? You can't possibly mean the actual Holy Grail, right? The Holy Grail. A grail said to have received the blood of Christ. It's considered to be one of the greatest holy relics, and said to be capable of many miracles. The most common rumor about it is that the one who obtains the Holy Grail will obtain the world. But that's just an invention. After all, the Holy Grail itself is almost something that exists but doesn't exist. A Holy Grail that makes wishes come true certainly appears in many folklores and legends around the world, but that's it. A fictional power that doesn't exist and isn't possible, that's the Holy Grail. So, answer. Kotomine Kire. Is the Holy Grail you're talking about really the Holy Grail? Of course. The Holy Grail that appears in this town is real. As a proof, a great miracle of the servants has occurred. The great miracle of the servants has occurred. Summoning and controlling past heroes. No, a miracle close to resurrecting the dead is almost a sorcery. Uh, oh yeah, okay. A holy grail with this much power shall grant its owner unlimited power. The object's unreality is worthless in front of that truth. So... It means that even if it's a fake, it doesn't matter if it has powers that would overwhelm even the true holy grail. Alright. Let's assume there really is- oh, alright. Let's assume there really is a Holy Grail. And why is it required to do something like the Holy Grail War? We shouldn't be killing each other if the Holy Grail exists. If the Holy Grail is so great, we can all share its power. That's a fair argument, but we do not have such freedom. Only one person can obtain the Holy Grail. That's not something we chose, but what the Holy Grail has decided. The Holy Grail decides the Seven Masters and summons the Seven Servants. I told you that this is a ritual. The Holy Grail chooses the people suitable to obtain it, and selects its appropriate owner by making them fight for it. That is the Holy Grail War, the ritual where those chosen by the Holy Grail kill each other to obtain it. Priest speaks plainly. I have no rebuttal, and I look down at my left hand. <laughs> There's the mark they call the command spell. It must mean that as long as I have this mark, I can't quit being a master. I'm not convinced. Even though only one person can be chosen, I don't like the idea that all we can do is kill the other masters. Huh? Now hold on, you're misunderstanding if you think you have to kill them. There's no need to kill the masters. Huh? But you said we have to kill each other. Kotomine said so too. You will kill each other. You be quiet, Kire. Now, the Holy Grail in this town is in spirit form. It's not something with a form, so it's something we have to call forth by a special ritual, meaning we have to materialize it. We can call for it as magi, but since it's in spirit form, we can't reach it. Do you understand what that means? Yeah, only spirits can touch spirits, right? Oh, wait, that's why you need the servants. Exactly. To put it simply, the goal of the Holy Grail War is to eliminate all the servants except your own. So there's no rule that you have to kill the masters. Man, she could have told me that earlier. Honestly, Tosaka and this priest were being mean. Now I'm relieved. So, even if we enter this Holy Grail War, Tosaka's not gonna die. I see. I guess that is one way to think. Then let me ask you, Emiyashiro. Do you think you can beat your own servant? Beat Saber! <laughs> it's impossible! In the first place, magic is useless against her. And she's skilled with her sword. Then let me ask you one more thing. It is a boring question, but do you think you are superior to your servant? Huh? What's he saying? I can't beat Saber. <laughs> so there's no way I'm superior to her. <laughs> for this question, my answer will for this question, my answer will always be that I'm weaker than my servant, so. Oh. That's right. Servants are hard to defeat even with a servant. So, what should you do? See, it's such a simple solution. Servants can only exist with a master. 
No matter how powerful the servant is, the servant will disappear if the master dies. So, that's right. It's a natural solution. No one would choose to take the hard way. If you want to win, the most effective way is to kill the servant. The most effective way to kill the servants would be to kill their masters instead. Okay. I understand that killing the master is an effective way to eliminate other servants. But then, if their servant gets killed, does that make someone not a master anymore? Only servants can touch the Holy Grail, right? Then there's no point to a master that doesn't have a servant. No, the right to be a master still remains as long as you have the command spell. A, ser a master is a magus that can form a, s a contract with servants. As long as you have the command spell, you can form a contract with servants. The servants whose masters are killed do not disappear right away. They can stay in this world until their magical energy runs out. If such abandoned, serv abandoned servants exist, a master with no servant can form a contract with them. That will allow them to rejoin the war. That's why masters kill other masters. Because if you allow them to live, there's a risk they'll impede you in the future. So what if you use up your command spell? Then you won't be able to form a contract with the other masters. And the freed servant will go off with someone else, too. Wait, that's... Yes, you're right. If you use up your command spell, you'll be liberated from your duty as a master. However, I do not think a magus exists that would waste a command spell that allows them to use such powerful magic. If there exists such a magus, he isn't even an amateur, but just a chicken. The priest laughs, as if he knows what I'm thinking about. I'm annoyed. That priest is making fun of me. I think he's trying to provoke me. His tone of voice pisses me off. You must understand now, so we will finish the explanation of the rules. Well then, let us return to the beginning, Emiyashiro. You said you have no intention of being a master. Do you still feel that way? If you want to abandon your responsibilities as a master, that is fine too. As you've realized, you may use up your command spell to end your contract with Saber. In that case, I will guarantee your safety until the Holy Grail War ends. Hold on, why do you have to guarantee my safety? I can protect myself. I do not have enough free time to care for you either, but this is one of the rules. I've been dispatched to supervise the repeating Holy Grail War. That is why I must minimize the victims of the war. Protection of Magi who lost their claims to being a master is one of my biggest responsibilities as the supervisor. Repeating Holy Grail War? Hold on. Repeating? Does he mean this kind of battle has happened many times before? What do you mean? The Holy Grail War didn't just start now? Of course not. You think a supervisor would have been dispatched if it were so? This church bears a duty to recover the holy relics, as we are the lowest of the special agencies. Occasion er, yeah. Originally, it was our goal to research and recover the true cross, but here we have a duty to investigate the Holy Grail. We have to investigate the 726th Holy Grail that has appeared in this far eastern land. We must recover it if it's real, and dispute it if it is not. 726th? That many Holy Grails? Who knows? It just means that there have been at least many things that seemed like one. And one of those is the Holy Grail from the Holy Grail War observed in this town. According to records, it said the first battle occurred about 200 years ago. Since then, the battles between masters have been repeating in a cycle of about 60 years. This is the fifth Holy Grail War. Since the last one was 10 years ago, this will be the shortest cycle yet. Are you guys insane? You guys have repeated this thing four times already? I feel the same way. As you said, people have repeated this event many times. Yes. In the past, the Holy Grail Wars were terrible. Masters were driven by their desires, forgot their teachings as magi, and just killed each other indiscriminately. I think you already know that it is the highest crime for a magus to use his magic in public. A Magus cannot allow his identity to be revealed to the public. But masters in the past have violated that. The Magic Association dispatched a supervisor to caution them. They only made it in time for the Third Holy Grail War. The one that dispatched then- the one they- the one dispatched then was my father. Do you understand now, boy? Yeah, I understand we need a supervisor. But from what you said, isn't this Holy Grail War fundamentally bad? Oh? How is it bad? Because the past Magi were people who would break the rules of the Magi, right? Then let's say this Holy Grail thing really exists. What will you do if the one who remains is someone who uses the Holy Grail selfishly? 
It's bad if such things obtained by someone who has no problem killing others. If it's the job of the Association to look after, after Magi, then shouldn't you guys be punishing those kinds of people? I question, with a little hope. But as expected, Kotomine Kire laughs. Of course not. There are no Magi who will act outside their own interests. We only supervise the rules of the Holy Grail War. We do not care what happens afterwards. The Association is not concerned about the kind of person that attains, obtains the Holy Grail. It's ridiculous! What if the Master that obtains the Holy Grail is the worst guy possible? It would be problematic, but we can do nothing. It is the Holy Grail War that chooses its owner, and we do not have the power to stop a Master who has been chosen by the Holy Grail War. It is a Grail that makes wishes come true, after all. The one who obtains it will be able to do as he pleases. But, if you don't want that, then all you have to do is win it yourself. That is the most reliable way, isn't it? Otomine's trying to hold back his laughter. It's like he's enjoying my clumsy inability to accept the facts. What's wrong, boy? I think that was a good idea, so will you not accept it? It's none of your business. Anyway, I don't have any reason to fight. I'm not even interested in the Holy Grail, and I don't feel like a master even if you tell me I am. Oh, so you are not concerned about what the winner of the Holy Grail War would do, even if it lends lead, <laughs> even if it leads to disaster? That's. I can't answer that question. Crap, his words are violent. He forced the truth onto me, whether I want it or not. That is fine. If you have no reason to fight, so you are not troubled by what happened ten years ago. Ten years ago. That's right. At the end of the last Holy Grail War, an unsuitable master touched the Holy Grail. I do not know what that master wished for. All we know is the results of the disaster that came afterwards. For an instant, that image of hell flashes in my head. Hold on. That can't be. It is. It is an event that everybody in this town knows about, Emi Ashiro. 500 killed or wounded. 134 buildings burned down. That inferno, still unexplained, is the remains of the Holy Grail War. Sick. Vision blurs. I lose concentration. I can't focus my eyes. My body stumbles. But I hold myself firm. I hold on to consciousness by clenching my teeth. I hold back my nausea with the anger boiling up in me. Emiakun? What's wrong? You're pale white. I know it's not a comfortable story, but if you want, we can take a rest for a while. I'm sorry, I can't swap back and forth between Kotomine voice and Rin voice so easily. Mm. <sighs> I must have looked terrible. I think it's very rare for Tosaka to be worried like that. Don't worry. I feel better after seeing your weird face. Hey, just what's that supposed to mean? Oh, I have no hidden intentions. I meant it literally, so don't worry about it. Well, fine. Hey, that's worse, you big oaf! School's number one honor student, Tosaka Rin, smacks me in the head. That does it. With that, the nausea and anger go away. Thanks. You really did help, so don't bully me too much. I have a few more things to ask about. She looks like she hasn't hit me enough, but she still lets me continue. Oh, you still have questions? Alright, let out anything- everything you want to say. You should know what I want to ask, yet he asks me to go on. Fine. Emi Ashiro won't lose to you. Then I'll ask. You said this is the Fifth Holy Grail War. Then has anyone ever obtained the Holy Grail? Of course. A sad event like that little annihilation doesn't happen every time. Oh, a sad event like that annihilation doesn't happen every time. Then... Do not be hasty. It is easy just to obtain it. After all, the Holy Grail is managed in this church. If you speak of just touching it, I touch it every day. Huh? The Holy Grail is at this church? Of course. It is only the vessel. It is empty. Green said it earlier that the Holy Grail is in spirit form. What we maintain is a well-made replica of the Holy Grail. We use this as the catalyst to draw down the real Holy Grail and transform it into a Grail that grants wishes. It's like the relationship between servants and masters. 
Yes, there was indeed a man who a man who obtained the real Holy Grail temporarily using that method. Then was that was that Holy Grail real? No, what happened to the guy who obtained it? Nothing. The Holy Grail was imperfectly completed. It was the result of a foolish man, affected by sentiment. Hmm? The previous pressure gone, the priest narrows his eyes, as if in regret. What do you mean? Didn't the Holy Grail appear? It is easy to just make the Holy Grail appear. Once the seven, servan seven servants are present, the Holy Grail will appear in time. As Reem said, there is no need to kill other masters. But that does not complete the Holy Grail. That thing decides its own appropriate master, and for that reason, it could not be obtained by a man who, avoid battle, who avoided battles. <laughs> so that just means it's- wait, who's talking? Oh. What the fuck? Wait, who's talking? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so that just means it's useless to obtain the Holy Grail without settling matches with the other masters. The master who obtained the Holy Grail first in the last war was just a chicken. He just ran away from the Holy Grail, saying that he didn't want to fight other masters. So saying, Tosaka looks away from Kotomine. No way. Does that mean Kotomine was one of the masters in the last war? And that he retired because he refused to fight in spite of obtaining the Holy Grail? Kotomine. You didn't fight? I did until halfway. But I made a bad decision. As a result, I only obtained an empty Holy Grail. Well, I guess that was my limit anyway. Because the other masters were all monstrous. I lost my servant first and was taken under my father's protection. Come to think of it, it was inappropriate for the son of a supervisor to be chosen as a master. Father died at that time. Since then, I have succeeded the role of supervisor, and I protect the Holy Grail at this church. Saying that, the priest called Kotomine Kire turns around. For him stands the symbol of worship. That is the end of our conversation. The only ones qualified to obtain the Holy Grail are those who have servants. When there is only one of you left, the Holy Grail should naturally appear in front of you. Tell me your decision as to if you want to join this battle, the Holy Grail War, now. The priest requests my final decision. I'm at a loss for words. I had no reason to fight until just now. Now, I have a reason to fight and a will to fight. But can I really accept that? Are you still undecided? Look, a master is not something you can be just because you want to. Reen has been training long as a magus, but it was not determined that she would be a master. All that could be decided beforehand was to all that could be decided beforehand was whether to prepare for it or not. Only magi are chosen to be masters. If you were a magus, you should have been ready already. I guess it cannot be helped if you say you are not. You and your teacher were failures in that case. It is merely annoying for such a magus to be fighting, so get rid of your command spell now. <laughs> Just need to ask. I.